Watch you guys, in this video we're going to tell you how to shuck an external hard drive for some cheap storage. Now looking online for storage, 6 terabyte drives which I bought are pretty expensive. You can see here the Western Digital Red 6 terabyte, these are the NAS version here, 5,400 revs per minute, 256 megabytes of cache and they are classified as SMR. Just recently Western Digital have been in a little bit of hot water with not branding their drives as SMR or CMR. So that is the problem that you're going to have when you're trying to find decent drives. They are pretty expensive. Now, this video is about uh, shucking the Western Digital Elements external uh, drive, and we're going to show you how to do it. So I bought two of these. These are on sale for £86 each. These are the Western Digital Elements uh, external hard drive. Now, they don't have an Ethernet port or anything like that, so they just have a drive in there. Now, the trouble is you don't know what drive is inside these until you shuck it, basically remove it from the enclosure. So I'm just going to remove these from the box here. Now, it's pretty easy to remove the drive from the enclosure. You will need some sort of card or credit card or Prytor or something along those lines. So let's remove all this from the packaging. Now, I don't need all the cables and stuff like that. I'm just going to discard all this. Some people like to keep this just in case they want to send the drive back. You'd have to put it all back into its external uh, casing if you want to claim this on warranty. Because once you've removed it from its casing, the warranty will be void. So you'd have to put it all back. Um, but basically, I'm going to be discarding this. So this is the actual uh, enclosure here. So let's get our card. And you need to pry along the end here. There's about four little catches here. You just need to sort of push in and unclip them. Once you uh, get a card in, you can sort of lever it out a little bit and uh, just a little bit fiddly, but just get your card in and uh, basically all your pry tool and push back. And it should you should hear a bit of clicking and that is the actual plastic catches releasing itself from the outer plastic bit there. I'm just going to run this up on the edge here and just try to pull back. Now, I'm not too concerned about if this broke or anything because I won't be using the plastic um, housing and I will be discarding it, so I'm not too interested in keeping it. Um, but I will try to get this off without damaging it just to show you. And uh, you will need to pry away here until you get your fingernail in there. You can put another card in if you want to hold this off. Just trying to cut this a little bit so you don't spend too much time here. It does take a, a few minutes just to get it off. So I'm just trying to get that in and you'll hear some clicking and that's basically the plastic clips. And once you've released those clips you should be able to then just pry it open just like so and you should see there's no damage to the actual device at all here. I can clean this up and put this all back together if I wanted to and it's just held inside this little uh, housing here. So there's a little plastic part there as well. You can unclip that. And there is your drive. And it's held in with these four rubber uh, anti-shock mounts here. So you can just remove these by just pushing down on them. So I find just pushing down on one of these on the outer end here will just literally loosen this right up. And then basically all you need to do is just pull this one out. Once one of them's out, like so, it should start to release the drive. I'll do the other corner now and just release this right out here. There we go. And then you can just slip out the drive. Now you can discard all of your outer casing here. We don't need that anymore. Now, of course, we've got the power adapter there and the cable uh, adapter here, which we need to unscrew from the drive. And this is just held on with two screws. So just get your Phillips screwdriver here and just unscrew these. Pretty straightforward stuff. Again, if you are keeping this, then try not to damage it and keep this to one side. And uh, basically, you would need to put that all in the box and save it. I'm not too concerned about that, to be honest. So I'm just going to remove these. So let me just unscrew this last screw here. And then that should uh, release the actual board here so we can remove it. Now, there is another board on here which you do need to leave on the drive because that is part of the drive. But that board what we've just removed was part of the enclosure. So there we have our six terabyte Western Digital Drive. And uh, if you don't know what types of drives these are, this is obviously not for resale. 
and uh, you can see here it just gives you the date of the drive when it was made which was pretty new it was in september the 20th 2020 so it's a pretty new drive now if you're wondering whether these drives are smr or cmr you can uh, do some research yourself uh, but i already know that these are smr drives because western digital have been creating these smr drives the way to tell is open up a clear disk info and you can see here the smart information if it has trim in here that is a good indication that you've got an smr drive and if you look here as well it tells you the actual revs per minute and it also the cache if you've got 256 uh, megabytes of cache that's normally a sign that you've got the smr version uh, of drives now pretty much a lot of the drives that uh, western digital have been making are smr the older drives were cmr which were a lot better and faster so if you're looking to put these into a nas drive you can do uh, there's nothing wrong with using these drives in nas drives but some people have been complaining saying uh, that the read speeds are pretty good but the write speeds are not as good so it just really depends what you want to use it for there is articles out there you can read i'll leave the links in the video description which uh, explains all about uh, CMR and SMR hard drives but it's really sort of out of the scope of this, this video but it will go into great detail about what you can expect from CMR and SMR hard drives and the benefits of them and basically the impact it will have on the drive when you're using them inside some sort of NAS drive so just be mindful before you go out and purchase one of these Western Digital Elements uh, types of enclosures because at the end of the day if you are looking for uh, super fast cmr drives you'll probably be quite disappointed because you're not going to get it inside one of these devices unless you're buying the 10 terabyte or 12 terabyte versions which do come with cmr drives but anything with eight terabytes and below will be an smr drive so just bear in mind before you buy that type of drive for your project now these drives will still be ideal for um your computer for storage uh, to put them inside your computer also some people will still want to put them in a NAS drive and they still will work uh, but you might see a little bit of an impact on performance anyway with that said my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk have a great weekend guys and i shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching bye for now